as mm. Age of the Exotic by Jamie James. So according to Paul Bowles, a tourist travels quickly home while a traveler moves slowly from one destination to the next. Uh, in The Glamour of Strangeness, Jamie James describes a third species, those who roam the world in search of the home they never had in the place that made them. So this book is about six artists who were part of this group. He calls it sort of this lost national school. Um, these people who left their homes in search of the exotic and the unknown. So it's, it's, it's six little mini biographies. Um, the, there's one about a devastatingly handsome German painter who remade his life in Bali, uh, a Javanese painter who found fame in Europe, a Russian Swiss writer who roamed the Sahara dressed as an Arab man. She was a woman. <laughs> um, the American exper uh, an American experimental filmmaker who went to Haiti and became a committed follower of voodoo. Uh, Paul Gauguin is perhaps the most famous one, he, um, the French painter who set sail for Tahiti. There's a naval doctor, poet, and novelist who immersed himself in classical Chinese civilization in um, imperial uh, Peking. Uh, the subjects really run the gamut from eccentric to bizarre to downright crazy, um, which really adds kind of a surprising <laughs> element of humor. Um, Maya Darren, who was the voodoo lady, was arguably completely unhinged, I mean, off the rails. Um, but she's fascinating. Her story is really interesting. So these little mini biographies, there's, there's six of them, and they're very accessible. Um, he was a tra the author was a travel writer in a past life, uh, so he's uh, very good at writing in this sort of non-textbookish way. Um, it's erudite without being terribly academic. Um, there's also this fa uh, fabulous supporting cast of characters um, who are, because they're true stories, real people. So Charlie Chaplin, Noel Coward, Henri Rousseau, Queen Victoria, they all make an appearance. Um, my one criticism is, that the various stories don't necessarily come together in any kind of cohesive conclusion. Um, the element is of uh, this element of exoticism is really all that kind of ties them together in the end. But because the essays are so descriptive and so entertaining and so well written, it's pretty easy to kind of forgive him not having this tightly wrapped uh, conclusion. Um, they're, they're good on their own and again like uh, like with Always Happy Hour, the short stories, you could just read one of these mm. you know here mm. and there. They're, they're, um, they, it looks longer than there it is because there are lots of notes so um, <laughs> you could just pop into it when you want to. So again this was The Glamour of Strangeness, Artists in the Last Age of the Exotic by Jamie James. Very good, Great. very good. Um, I think that we have time to talk a little bit about our lists. Um, why don't you Jackie, why don't you start? Um, the one I would really point out um, from my list is um, just won the Booker International Prize. So it's a little uh, a new prize. I think they created it a couple of years mm. ago um, they, that they give out in June. And it's called it's by David Grossman, and it ca it's called A Horse Walks Into a Bar. And it's translated from, the, um, from Israeli, actually. Um, he was an Israeli writer. And it's about a comedian. And the whole book takes place kind of in real time over, I think, it's like just a couple hours. And it's um, basically him bombing. <laughs> and, and how uncomfortable how that goes. Uh, so yeah, just just yes. won a prize. So it was really kind of what we were going for with the Discovery Collection. I'm reading it as we speak, <laughs> and you're absolutely right. It's it's cringe worthy, <laughs> but in a really good way. <laughs> ah, okay, that makes sense. Very good. Thank you, Jackie. Jeff. Um, I'll just quickly mention two. Again, my list is a mix of fiction and nonfiction. Um, if uh, any of you have never read The Big House by George mm -hmm. Howe Colt, um, it's, it's a perfect summer read. Um, Colt is married to Anne Fadiman, who's an extremely famous writer in, in her own right. Um, and The Big House is all about, it's nonfiction, it's, it's about his actual family home, which is this massive Victorian pile um, down, I think it's in, actually in a uh, part of Falmouth. And it's just a chronicle of the experience of the family, almost told from the perspective of the house um, and all of the people who've come and gone in it. And it's, it's just a wonderful family saga because it's real. Mm -hmm. um, and I think even if you don't have a gigantic house on the Cape, you all have some kind of memory of what that's like to go away with your family and, yeah. and hang out on the beach. Um, but it's also it's the history of the construction of the house, how people went, through, grew up in it, and how they interact with it. It's 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 just delightful. Um, and the other one I'd also mention is the Orphans of Race Point, which mm -hmm. is fiction, um, and that's a book that Leanne recommended, and I think book talked a couple of years ago. 
um, and I have it on my list because it does take place on the Cape, and it's just, it's a fantastic character study. Um, it's powerful and moving, and I read it only because Leanne told me to. Um, <laughs> Sometimes she, I'm right. She was absolutely right, so I'm adding my voice to hers and saying, if if you didn't believe her, believe me, you must read that book. <laughs> right, and I think you could live at any beach and find that that's part of your, um, yeah. you know, part of the character study, but I think Ray's point is. Yeah. And the same thing with the, the, you know, the big house. Did you read that one? I did, oh, and yeah. we did it as a discussion for one of my book groups, mm -hmm. and it was terrific because that house is a character. Absolutely. In such an amazing way. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Beth. Oh, so um, following on Jeff, the big house, his wife, Ann Fadiman, is on my list. Oh. And uh, that's The Spirit Catches You and Then You Fall. Mm. And it's about the, it's a, it's a nonfiction book and it's the intersection between Western medicine and a Hmong family whose daughter has epilepsy. And she really does a great job of talking about mm. both sides, how, it's, how, it, how they work together and how they don't work together. And the second book I want to mention is Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunderson. Oh. Saunders. Saunders, sorry. sorry. That's and um, that's a new book, came out this year, and it takes place uh, when uh, Lincoln's son Willie is interred, interred um, and there are spirits in the grave, and um, it, the bardo is like limbo. So it's what takes place there and how the characters live and mm -hmm. what happens with Lincoln. It, it's really wonderful. Look, you read it, right? No, I haven't, but Jeff oh. has. I, I read it, and it's... It's mind-boggling. Yeah, there, I, it's really wonderfully there, done. Um, I guess it's been optioned for film rights, and I can't even yeah. imagine how I'm they're going to so do curious. it. I'm so curious. Well, part of it is that it's they, almost experimental yeah, in the they, structure. They and put in, she puts, he puts in bits of history in it. Yeah. So there's quotes that are really historical, yeah. and then but mm, it's, there's this it's other an world. It's amazing book. And I have the audio I'm going to listen to because the audio uh, reviews have been off the charts just because there's a voice for each individual, no matter, and there's like over 256 yeah. characters. So, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to that. I just, I have to experience yeah. it that yeah. way. Anyway, um, Karen. Well, speaking of film rights and audio, um, I just wanted to put in a plug for... Neil Gaiman's American Gods, which I mentioned at the very beginning, which is the, one of the books that engendered this list. Um, I listened to that, um, and it was actually the 10th anniversary edition of the book, which they let him put a bunch of things back into <laughs> that he had had to take out when he wrote it the first time because they weren't sure what kind of a, you know, whether it was going to sell or not. And of course, it sold madly. And um, the audio is a full cast of, full, fully. Uh, you know, there's an actor for each part <laughs> instead of some one person reading it. So it's a full cast of characters, and it's amazing. Really great audio. And, of course, they have made that now into a TV series, yeah. so um, which apparently is supposed to be quite good. So, um, yeah, Neil Gaiman's American Gods, the audio version, is my plug. Oh, very good. That's great. Um, I have a couple of lists, as I said, and I want to mention the fact that on the uh, Stunning Stories list, Louise Miller's The City Baker's Guide to Country Living, I thought was just a lovely. If you want a very sweet story that you can just settle down to on the beach, this is truly one of the true beach reads on my list, I think. Um, it's about a very talented chef who gets into all sorts of trouble in her life in the city and decides that she needs to run away for a while in Vermont. She works for this little inn. And um, it, it, one of the things that really, really got me about this book was great character, of course, as you know, is a hook, but you smell the pace Streets baking, and you can hear the music in the story. The writer does a great job with that. So it's, that was a fun, sweet book that I think um, might appeal to a variety of people. And um, as far as the non, the the. Adrenaline goes, there's a lot of things on this list that I can speak about, but the one I want to really talk about is The Girl Before by J.P. Delaney, which has two very unreliable narrators, which <laughs> everyone knows is really a thing with me. Truly well done. It happens to be a male writer writing two female voices that is just astonishing. Um, and it, it, it has a past character and a, a, a current character and what happens in this particular architectural abode that they live in and the architect involved in creating it. It's it's hard to describe, but really well done. And it's one of those twisty turny endings that really you think you figured it out and then there's this little arc that just goes, Really? It was wonderful. <laughs> it was really wonderful. And I listened to that. That was a good listen. So you were wrong twice then. 
Yes, this happens occasionally. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so, um, Yes, so and I just want to say really shout out about the Discovery Collection in the sense that I picked up a book of essays by Lindy West called Shrill and it, they were wonderful and I don't think I would have actually noticed it because I don't do a lot of nonfiction peeking as we know because I don't have time as fiction queen um, <laughs> and I've been thoroughly enjoying them so it's like that's a great place to discover something that you don't expect so um, so thank you for joining us thank you guys that was a lot of fun um, I want to remind everybody that you can get the lists at www.wakefield.org um, wakefieldlibrary.org excuse me at the BB Library's website and we have a lot of lists waiting for you on the, with the display that is at the library that will be there all summer so you can find all the books on our list and everything we've talked about. Thank you. Mm -hmm.